My name is Annette Delu, and you are listening to The Heart of You. Do you find yourself saying, it's a sign all the time? Or are you one of those people who really believes that destiny and fate are a real thing? Or when you hear somebody say, you only live once, do you think to yourself, actually, that's kind of not true? Then you have come to the right place. The Heart of You is a podcast about spirituality, but not in that way that you might be thinking. Over the next 20 episodes, we are going to explore everything you've ever wanted to know about your soul, about spirituality. If you were guided to listen to this podcast, then it is possible that you have either read The Secret or have seen the movie. I just want to show you that that is one very, very tiny portion of what you are capable of. Yes, manifestation is a really wonderful thing to do, and it's something that we are constantly doing. It's whether we're manifesting in the positive or the negative. And that is one of the episodes that we will cover this season. So imagine if you were completely tapped into the universe, not just for manifestation, but for all aspects of your life, and that you could have these type of synchronicities and this serendipity all of the time. This is what I'm here to show you. The best way to listen to the heart of you is to take what resonates, and if it doesn't resonate with you, you can leave it. I'm not here to bestow upon you belief systems that you may not have currently. I am here to open your eyes to something that you may not be aware of. Essentially, to get to know the heart of you. As I'm recording this, I just passed my two-year anniversary of moving to Paris. When I was 16, my sister moved to France for an exchange program through her university. I had never been to France at that point, but I had been studying French in high school for about two years. The first time I went to visit her, I fell in love The first place I went to was Paris. I was with my father. If you've ever just stepped foot in a place and just knew that you belonged there, that's exactly how I felt. Moving to France is a dream that I have had for a very long time. There just never seemed to be the perfect moment to move to France, whether it was logistics or my job or some sort of relationship there was always something standing in the way of me moving to France. About three years ago, I was living in Chicago, where I had been residing for about 20 years. And I just decided I needed to get out. I needed to move to a different place. I just felt this calling, this urge. And I later realized that this was definitely the universe and my guides telling me that this is the right time. So learning to follow that intuition is something that we are also going to cover in later episodes. I started doing the research and figured out that, in fact, I could get a visa for a year to come here and live. I had been a designer for the past 20 years and was slowly making the transition into my new practice of spiritual guidance as well as Akashic Record Readings, which is also known as Past Lives. I was also doing more tarot readings for people. So slowly this transition was happening into my new reality. It felt like the absolute perfect time to make a change like this, an energetic change, as well as having the freedom to be able to work from anywhere in the world allowed me this ability to just pick up and go. And so I did. Of course, I went through all of the usual stresses and heartaches of paperwork, of getting a visa and all of that. But ultimately, I decided that this was going to be a permanent move. So I put all of my things into a shipping container. 
I grabbed my cat and I jumped on a plane and I didn't know where I was going to live. I didn't know what was going to happen. I basically only knew one person. So yes, it was a, it was a huge adventure and it was a huge leap for me. Initially, I was staying in an Airbnb, and I'm not going to go into that story because it ended up being a nightmare situation. That's when I actually met Gail, and you might know her from the Paris Underground Radio podcast, the Paris Estate of Mind. She's wonderful, and if you haven't listened to her podcast yet, I would highly recommend it. Gail changed everything for me. She basically put me into one of her uh, temporary stay apartments. She does long-term and short-term stays. The apartment I was staying in was just for about a month before she had had other tenants that were coming in. But that month allowed me the perfect amount of time to sort of get settled and start getting my bearings and understanding what I had just done. I had just picked up my entire life and moved to France. Fast forward a couple of months. At this point, I have already started looking for my permanent home. Everyone I came across was saying, oh, how difficult it was to find an apartment in Paris, and oh, it's impossible, and this and this and that. I started getting this pushback. Every time I tried to make an appointment, they would hear me speaking French in an American accent, and they would basically tell me, absolutely not. We have no appointments available. That's it. So I was, having a, I was having a bit of a rough time. I sat down with my manifestation journal and I wrote down every single thing I wanted in an apartment. I wanted an Eiffel Tower view. I wanted a very large apartment because obviously I work from home, so I needed the space. I asked for all of these things and just put it down in the manifestation journal. And then I closed the book. I forgot about it and went back to my search. Fast forward, we have two weeks before all of my belongings are arriving in a shipping container, and I still don't have an apartment. Gail had called me and said, hey, a bunch of friends, we're all going out to dinner, do you wanna come? My intuition was telling me, you know what, just go because you're not gonna do anything more tonight. You just need to relax and let go of the outcome, let go of the situation for the moment. So I went to dinner, And I just so happened to be sitting next to uh, a friend of hers wife. She started asking me what I was looking for in an apartment. So I literally started rattling off all of the things that I had in my manifestation journal. She said, okay, that's no problem. I'm going to take a look at work. And we often have notices on the board about apartments that are available. Now, keep in mind, I don't have a CDI. I'm not here for work. So I don't have the proper paperwork to get in an apartment. I don't have any of that, right? Being a freelancer, it's incredibly difficult to get an apartment in the U.S., let alone an apartment here in France. The next day, I get a message stating that there was one notice on the job board that she had seen that was for this one particular apartment. She said, it's a tiny bit out of your price range, but, you know, just give it a shot because it looks amazing. So I did. And in fact, it had not only all of the things that I had asked for in my manifestation journal, but it also had a pool. It had a parking space and I don't have a car. (laughs) So it literally had everything above and beyond what I had asked for. I went the next day, made an appointment, saw the apartment. The woman who owns the apartment is the sweetest woman on the planet. I immediately told her that I would take the apartment. And she said, okay, well, we have to get your financials in order. And I said, of course. I gave her all of my paperwork. Her son called me the next day and said, well, I have some questions about your bank statements and, you know, they're they're in the U.S. and that sort of thing. And I said, yes, of course. And I hear in the background the landlord basically saying, I don't care. I just want her in the apartment. Within two days... I had the keys. I gave the security deposit and I had signed the lease. Within two weeks, I had found the perfect Paris apartment. Now that is the story on paper. Behind the scenes, 
I was freaking out. <laughs> I knew that the universe had my back. I always know that the universe has my back. But sometimes it's really hard to trust that. It's hard to trust that everything is going to work out the way that it needs to. Behind the scenes, I'm asking my tarot cards, I'm using my pendulum, I'm using all of my divination tools, which we will go over that in another episode as well. All of the messages I was getting from the universe was, wait, wait, everything's going to be fine. Don't worry. Everything's going to be great. And I'm like, how can you say that? I've got two weeks and I have nowhere to live. (laughs) It was one of those situations where it was a complete test of faith for me. Each time I would see a listing on Sologe or another website for an apartment, I would instantly ask my tarot cards or my pendulum, is this the right apartment? Is this the one for me? And they would say, no, just wait, just wait. It actually became a little frustrating at certain points. The lesson that I needed to learn was to trust and have faith, not only in my intuition, but in the universe. And the fact that I was meant to be here was meaning that even though things were not completely just hearts and butterflies and everything just kind of fell into place, things did eventually completely fall into place. Was it hard at times? Of course it was. But the rewards were so worth it. This is just one tiny little story of one synchronicity, one element of guidance I had from the universe, and I have countless others. I could talk about how a year before I moved to France, I was walking around the streets of Chicago, and for a solid six months, every time I turned around, there was somebody speaking French behind me. (laughs) We're talking about those types of signs, And what I like to call those are little breadcrumbs from the universe. They're telling you that you are on the right path. One thing I would like to make clear right now, sometimes when we think about enlightenment or spiritual awakening, we think, oh, we have to go to an ashram in India or we have to take 400 hours of yoga classes in order to achieve that. That is simply not true. I am definitely proof of that. My sister is an Ayurvedic master as well as a yoga instructor, and she also teaches meditation. I've tried yoga so many times, and I simply am not a fan. It isn't for me. I'm much more of a cardio biking kind of person. (laughs) Don't think that you have to be sitting in a yoga studio in order to have the spiritual experience. The other thing I want to mention is that the spiritual journey is not all hearts and flowers and unicorns. It's a hard journey to go through. It's going to force you to take a look at the parts of yourself that you haven't looked at probably for your whole life. It's going to shine a light on the places within your heart and within your soul that you may have been trying to ignore for however many years. Maybe it's a small trauma that you had from a breakup five years ago, or maybe it's a bigger trauma of a death in the family or something that is a bit more deep and heart-wrenching. The spiritual journey is going to take a look at all of these things. And the reason for that is because those things need to be cleared in order for new energy to come in. Think of it this way. When you're in a relationship and let's say you know the relationship has run its course and you know it needs to end, that relationship needs to end before you can start a brand new beautiful relationship. It is similar to that where new energy cannot come in until you get rid of the old. Healing also comes in cycles. If you've ever found yourself repeating the same things over and over again, there's a reason for that. If things keep on coming up in your life, whether you're dating the same person, even though it's been four different people, or 
whether your relationship with your parents continues to be the same thing over and over again, and you find yourself saying, oh, every time I see my parents, I feel like I'm 16 again. The reason for that is because those are situations that still need to be dealt with and they need to be cleared. We are going to take a look at some of those aspects from a spiritual standpoint. Of course, I'm a really big believer in therapy. I think therapy does a wondrous job at dealing with some of these issues. If you don't deal with the spiritual aspect of it, it's not going to get to the core or the root of where these issues stemmed from. One of the things I do for my clients is Akashic Record readings, which are past life readings. So some of the cycles you might be in have to do with past lives. It may not have anything to do with what you're dealing with in this lifetime. It could also be ancestral line. So there are a great many things that come into play when it comes to these cycles that you are repeating over and over again in your life. These are all topics that we are going to cover in the heart of you. There is something I would like to address as well. If you practice a particular religion, what I'm going to be speaking with you about in this podcast can actually complement your belief system within any religion that you practice. If you think about it, there are many religions that actually use divination tools. None of this is anything that is super new and groundbreaking. I know a lot of people call it new age, but it's actually very, very old age. (laughs) And we will go into a little bit of the history of that in later episodes. I just want to put your mind at ease that this does not mean that you have to let go of the current belief systems that you have unless you really, really want to. The last thing I would like to address is the enlightenment journey or if you want to call it your spiritual awakening, your spiritual journey, there is no end game. It is a constant growing process. I often make this analogy to my clients. Imagine you're in a video game and you continually have to go and collect all the items and do all of the things and save the princess at the castle, I guess if you're playing Mario Brothers or (laughs) Zelda, Essentially, your goal is to level up. It's to be a better you than you were yesterday. And that's all that we can ask of ourselves. I want to thank you for joining me today. And I look forward to walking this journey with you and pointing the way on your spiritual journey. If you are interested in learning more about me and the sessions that I do, feel free to go to my website at Infinite Soul Love. Dot com. On all social media, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at Infinite Soul Love 1111. Hey, and if you feel called, I would love it if you could rate The Heart of You on whatever streaming service you're using, whether it's Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Please take a moment, give it a review. It really does help the channel. Thanks so much. 